Good evening, everyone. We're so excited to have you all here tonight for the first International Baton Twirling Federation European Town Hall webinar. I am Jennifer Marcus, one of your moderators for the evening, and I first wanted to review some Zoom practices for those of you that might be unfamiliar with this platform. So just to let you all know, this webinar is being recorded live and it will be available on our YouTube channel following this webinar. So you can find that on YouTube under International Baton Twirling Federation. Our webinar this evening will last approximately 40 minutes with members of both the IBTF North American and European Executive Committee answering many questions they have received in the past months and year. If you have any additional questions uh, they have received, um, feel free to submit them over in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. You should see um, right below an option to send in a question. These will be answered later at another town hall or on the FAQ section of the website. Because of time constraints, any questions submitted will not be answered on this webinar. And if you have any questions along the way, please ask them over in the chat box and I'll be able to help you tonight. So that's housekeeping, questions about Zoom, or if you're having trouble hearing. I'll also be posting some links through the chat over on the side of your screen. So be sure to look at that throughout the webinar tonight so that you can have direct links to what they're, uh, what they're sharing. So the IBTF executives that are joining us here tonight from North America, we have Sandy Weemers, who is the president. We have Beverly Johnson, our vice president. From Europe, we have executive board members, Lise hagen Rebestad, who is the treasurer. We have Denise Pierce, and we have Paul Rutten. And then we also have executive technical members, Christine Bell, Paula DiMarchi, and Rita Schruten. Other members of the executive managing committee that are not present this evening are Jean-Patrick Rousset, Mauricio Chizoli, Jeff Johnson, Amy Williams, Moda Tushia, Darlene King Gabori, Dale White, and Jackie Stewart. The IBTF executive managing committee is a group of WBTF and WF NBTA representatives who meet physically once or twice a year and conduct all other business regularly via conference meetings and email, which they're getting very good at these days. So thank you again for joining us tonight. At this time, I'm going to be sending you over to President Sandy Weemers for a brief message before the town hall begins. Sandy, here we go. Thank you, Jen. I want to read part of a heartfelt message that Jeff Maytash, who is a member of our IBTF marketing and communications team, wrote for our website and our social media platforms. 2020 was supposed to be a monumental year for baton twirling. There were two world championships to look forward to, countless local and national competitions to help our twirlers prepare for their shining moments and the beginning to a new era of baton twirling led by the IBTF. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, all of the hard work and the preparations were cut short, ending the season prematurely. Our athletes' dreams had to be put on hold with the decision to postpone these major events. But ultimately, the right call was made. With the absence of a season to look forward to, our athletes have really shown us that the future is still very bright. They have taken to social media to share their new practice spots. They have created and connected through fun challenges online like hashtag apart but together pictures, the Go Wong videos, the World Baton Twirling Day, and the TikTok performances, just to name a few. So never have we ever been closer as a community, even though we are forced to remain apart. Our sport is receiving new appreciation through other platforms showcasing the creativity 
that our sport has to offer. When our athletes felt like they were lost during this crazy time, they are also the ones reminding us why we love baton twirling. Now, we must look forward with hope and confidence that coming together in 2022 under the umbrella of the IBTF for its first World Baton Twirling Championship and to enjoy the great opportunities that will be provided as we work towards unification. Together, we are better and stronger in our quest to make baton twirling relevant in the world of sport. So with that said, I'm turning this over to our other moderator, PJ Birkin, who will moder moderate this evening's webinar. Take it away, PJ. Thank you, Sandy, thank, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, hello, everyone. So happy to be with you tonight. Uh, the purpose of this webinar is to provide information about the IBTF as a whole and its purpose and to promote the inaugural IBTF World Baton Twirling Championships that will take place in 2022. Before we go any further, we wanted to be sure to mention that this, again, that this recording will be available post event on YouTube. Uh, without further delay, we are really excited to begin. So uh, my first question is back to Sandy. And it's so we were just, we would like to address right off the top, what is the full purpose of IBTF and why are we doing this? Well, for many years, the general baton twirling community has wondered why our sport is not better recognized and part of the Olympic movement. The briefest answer I can give you is this. Baton twirling cannot be considered for recognition because we lack the number of official national federations in the world to qualify. Now to further explain that, an official national sport federation is a registered organization within a country that has a democratically elected board of directors and other working committees made up of its members who conduct good governance by a fair and legitimate process to govern the activities of the sport. It takes 60 national member federations in a sport to qualify for Olympic recognition. And it takes 40 initial national member federations to qualify for acceptance as a member of the Global Association of International Sports Federations. Becoming a member of the Global Association of International Sports Federations, or GISF for short, is the first step that all international federations must take to ever achieve Olympic recognition status. So please keep in mind also that all twirling organizations must come together under one umbrella to have any chance of moving forward towards guise of membership and hopefully someday Olympic level. There cannot be two international federations in a sport and there cannot be two world championships practiced in the same sport. So we all, we know that this, uh, there are certain differences between the organizations which take time to sort out, but we have been working diligently on this process to begin to bring the sport together under one organization. Well, it's defi definitely evident that you guys have been putting in a tremendous amount of work towards this effort. Why, Sandy, is the Global Association of International Sports Federation recognition so important for baton twirling in general? Well, it's the key pillar to wider sports uh, movement, you know. Uh, it's, I love hearing you call it a sport, by the way. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I think that uh, GISAF began and was founded in 1967 and uh, it acts as the voice for the 125, I believe it's 125 members that it has, associate members and observers, which include both Olympic and non-Olympic sports organizations. Okay, so is this all about getting baton twirling into the Olympics or are there other benefits to this involvement? 
Well, getting into the Olympics is certainly a wonderful goal, and it will take years to accomplish, but it's certainly not the only objective. Other than the Olympics, some of the most recognized sporting events in the world today are events which fall under the jurisdiction of GISEF. Uh, examples would be the Asian Games, the Commonwealth Games, the Pan American Games, Mediterranean Games, among others. However, before multi sport games participation can be a reality for baton twirling, the recognition of a single international governing body as a member of GISEF must happen. GISEF membership also brings about uh, um, other benefits. It has become the gold standard, which implies good governance by a democratic and fair or uh, international sports governing body. GISEF recognition can assist in sports recognition and acceptance by each country's own sport governing bodies. It can help leverage um, to access to usage with training facilities. And it certainly helps validate the sport uh, to potential sponsors and mass media. It also helps validate our sport to um, being uh, able to attain uh, funding uh, and technical assistance in sports training education methods through their uh, national sporting organizations. GISEF has several levels of membership. The first level uh, IBTF must achieve is called AIMS, A-I-M-S, and that stands for the Alliance of Independent Members of Recognized Sports. And AIMS represents the interest of all sports that are not recognized by the uh, International Olympic Committee. Very good. Like I said, this is so exciting to hear the word sport used in baton twirling. And I can definitely relate to the opportunities that this sounds like it would create for our sport. So very exciting. Aside from guys, uh, membership, what other projects is IBTF currently developing? Well, the most exciting development is IBTF's two world championships beginning in 2022. And I'm delighted to have some of uh, my IBTF executive colleagues on board this evening to help answer some of those questions. All right, so one last question for you before we move on to your, the rest of your executive committee. Will the IBTF hold a general assembly of all national federation members sometime in the future? Yes. The actual date had originally been determined to follow the first two years of the, the world championships just mentioned. But again, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the competitions have now been moved from 2021 and 2022 to 2022 and 2023. So therefore, the executive will be discussing the need to probably move the first IBTF General Assembly until those first two years of competition have been completed. Um, the first IBTF General Assembly will also include elections for a new IBTF Executive Managing Committee, which will continue to include um, equal representation from both organizations. And the details of, of all of that election process will be finalized sometime this year by the Managing Committee. Great, that's great to hear, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you for that informative overview. Let's go ahead and move on and talk a little bit about the IBTF competitions you just mentioned that we will see in the future. And to kick it off, my first question is for Paulo. Paolo, um, are IBTF competitions only for the top elite level twirlers? Good evening to everyone. No, the IBTF vision is to become the governing body for the sport of baton twirling as recognized by the guys. This will include for sure the world championship, but also competition at a lower level for the new athletes which are developing, which will have the opportunity to compete at an international level. 
Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to be for Christine Bell, and it's how often are the IBTF World Championship competitions? Christine, we might still have you on mute. Sorry. No problem. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. IBTF is offering a lot of disciplines. So a world championship will be organized each year in summertime. IBTF will be hosting the World Baton Twirling Championship along with the World Majorette Championship and the Nations Cups in August 2022. Then following year 2023, will be organized the World Freestyle and Rhythmic Twirl in summertime as well. Thank you. I'm excited to put more stamps on my passport. This sounds <laughs> so wonderful. Um, okay, so our next question is for Lise. And the question is, if the WFNBTA and the WBTF are partnering to form the IBTF, what will happen to each of them? Well, hi, everybody. Uh, both organizations will continue to exist and operate independently for a period until it's necessary to unify all systems. Our hope uh, and goal is that the WFNBTA and WBTF partnership will encourage national federation to also partner together within their respective countries and work towards unification. Thank you. Okay, Paul, I'm coming to you. Um, can you share what is going to be happening to the IBTF Grand Prix? Good evening, guys. Uh, the IBTF Grand Prix competition is being retired. That competition demonstrates that WFMBTA federations and the WBTF federations could come together in an open spirit of competition. The IBTF World Championships re uh, competitions represent the next step to, in that partnership. However, IBTF has developed a Nations Cup competition for tier two athletes, which will be held in the even number of years prior to the World Baton Twirling Championships. Okay, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, Rita, this one's for you. Is the Nations Cup similar to WBTF's International Cup style of competition with the different levels offered to our athletes. Hello everyone. Yes, the IBTF Nations Cup is similar in concept to the WBTF International Cup level A and B. With the 2022 World Baton Twirling Championship, the IBTF is introducing a companion competition called the Nations Cup. It's designed as a tier two competition for the development of athletes around the world. Uh, for more information, you can uh, find that in the rule book from the IBTF World Baton Twirling Championship and the Nations Cup. Thank you, Rita. That's exciting. That makes me maybe want to consider coming out of retirement. <laughs> um, so this question is for Denise. Denise, uh, what is the purpose and the philosophy behind the Nations Cup competition? And how does the IBTF ensure, this is a two-parter two question, um, how does the IBTF ensure the Level B and Level A Nations Cup competition is fair for athletes? All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, for elite athletes, IBTF offers the World Championship, but it also offers the Nations Cup, which is a lower tiered competition for athletes who have not reached elite level yet. The Nations Cup will be held during the same time frame as the World Championship. Uh, so the um, Nations Cup will precede the World Championship. Okay. And it's the committee's view that giving our lower level athletes the opportunity to be exposed to the highest levels of competition and the incentive and learning opportunities that it provides is very important to the growth of our sport. It's also practical because it's likely that there will be athletes who have different proficiency levels in the various disciplines that are offered across the three competitions, those being the Nations Cup, 
the World Majorette Championships and the World Baton Twirling Championships. So for athletes to only have to travel once in order to take part in and be exposed to these three events makes sense economically. Uh, the Nations Cup has, ver has got very strict fair play rules in place with severe penalties for athletes that do not adhere to these rules, which are namely content restrictions. For those of you that are not familiar with content restrictions, this is basically a list of what an athlete can and cannot perform in a given dis discipline in order to be eligible to compete at the A and B levels offered in the Nations Cup. It's especially important to everyone to remember that this is not a competition where your elite level athletes simply water down their routines or simplify them to be eligible to compete in Nations Cup. It's essential that Nations Cup provides a fair and level playing field for its athletes. A list of all the content restrictions and the fair play rules are located on the website in the IBTF rulebook. We mm -hmm. hope that you'll make yourselves familiar with these, what the expectations are. It's a responsibility of the coach and the athlete to enter the appropriate level in the IBTF competitions based on the athlete's true proficiency and experience. This way, all the athletes should be competing against others of a similar skill set. The IBTF expects all member federations to respect and honour these levels in order to uphold the integrity of international competition and to promote a fair competitive environment. And we look forward to a very well attended and exciting triple event in Liverpool in August 2022. Thank you. Thank you. So do I. This is going to be one event we are not going to want to miss. Um, okay, so let's move on and talk a little bit more about that 2022 World Championships. And to do so, we're going to come back over to North America and speak with Beverly Johnson. Bev, what are the dis or what disciplines are involved in the World Baton Twirling Championship to be held in 2022? Unmute. PJ, I believe that question was for Christine Bell. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Excuse me, Christine. No problem, Paige. Back across no problem. Europe. Yes, I am ready. I am ready to explain Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> so the 2022 World Baton Dwelling Championship includes the disciplines of solo, two baton, three batons, extra artistic twirl, artistic pair, duet, twirl team, artistic team, twirling core and artistic group. Then the major red corps disciplines of traditional core, parade core, exhibition core and show twirl accessories core. The format of the World Baton Twirling Championship beyond 2022 is still being established by the IBTF Executive Committee. Thank you. Okay, so our next question that's very important is how do we qualify for the, for the IBTF World Championship or the IBTF Nations Cup? Lise, could you share that with us, please? I'll try to explain. The okay. qualifying <laughs> process is left up to each member federation. Some federations hold a qualifying competition, sometimes along with their national championship, and sometimes as a separate competition. Some federations qualify their athletes through a year-round process. Um, and uh, as we have heard, IBTF will continue with the WBTF's level uh, B and A athletes. And level B and A athletes have specific content restrictions. And these apply to the Nation Cups competition itself. And we suggest that this should also apply to any national qualifying process. 
That makes a lot of sense. So individuals wanting to qualify should really be in touch with what's happening in their member country. Okay, so uh, moving forward, we're gonna look into 2023, and that will be our first IBTF World Freestyle and Rhythmic World Championships. And we'd like to share a little bit about the um, disciplines that are going to be involved. And to do that, Rita, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Yeah, thank you. The World Freestyle and Rhythmic Championship includes the following disciplines, freestyle solo, rhythmic drill, freestyle pair, and freestyle team. The format for that competition beyond uh, 2023 is also uh, being established by the IBTF executive. Thank you. Paola, uh, what is the difference between freestyle, solo, and rhythmic twirl? Freestyle solo is a discipline that combines a short program of eight required elements performed with a standard piece of music with a freestyle created to the athlete's own choice of music. Rhythmic twirl does not include the short program and the routine is created with standard rules with limited acrobatic moves. Okay, and so for those who do not currently do short program, if they'd like to enter the freestyle solo event in 2023, what yes. avenues do they have to learn the short program? As the 2022 progress, there will be more detailed information about the 2023 World Freestyle and Rhythmic Championship that will assist everyone who is interested in learning more about the short program. In the meantime, in the WBTF website, there are public available information about the required elements of the short program for junior, which are the same elements required for the senior short program. The senior short program includes additional choreography between these required elements set to a standard piece of music. In the WBTF website, it's possible to find a complete rules document for short program, which are included in the WBTF policy manual, section 13. The IBTF is also planning to hold an online webinar clinic in the near future for athletes and coaches to learn short program. More information about the 2022 events, which are new also for the WBTF athletes, for example, Extrat and Duet, will be published soon. Thank you. Um, so if you have not checked out the IBTF batontrolling.org website, we really strongly encourage you to do so um, in regards to roles and policies for competition. Um, so on that note, one specific area in question, WBTF athletes have been allowed to perform gymnastics, but this has been restricted for WFNBTA. Bev Johnson, would you please share how IBTF will balance that difference between the two? Thank you, PJ, and hello everyone, good evening. Um, the achieving this balance um, began when the following statement was agreed upon by the 2015, 2017, and 2019 Grand Prix judges. The Grand Prix judges agreed that the use of acrobatics, even though permitted, would not be given extra consideration, nor would its use contribute to determining the rating and ranking of athletes. And then from that agreement came the uh, following statement, which is now the official IBTF philosophy regarding gymnastics and acrobatics. I hope you'll forgive me for reading carefully this statement. Uh, its importance cannot be overestimated. Here we go. The IBTF adjudication policy prioritizes, first and foremost, the quality and technique of aerial work, roles, contact material, and accompanying body work all other enhancements to a performance such as acrobatics, floor work, dance, novelty, etc., will not supersede the qualities and skills of achieved and developed baton twirling skills. And to further underline the commitment to this.
I believe we may have lost Bev. Um, I can go ahead and finish her statement. Um, okay, so uh, to further underline the commitment to this philosophy beginning with the 2022 World Baton Twirling Championships and 2022 Nations Cup, specific roles will apply to each discipline and level. As an example, athletes competing in solo are restricted to two acrobatic moves with different requirements as to how those moves are executed and which moves are allowed depending on the level you are competing in. Other individual and group disciplines are also affected. You'll find all these rules and acrobatic definitions located in the IBTF 2022 rule, rule book located, where do you think? On our website. Okay, um, moving on to wrap up this webinar. Um, Paul, could you share a little bit about how the IBTF Executive Managing Committee was chosen? I will try. Uh, in 2013, executive members of the WBTF and MBTA, then called the Global Alliance Committee, met to explore a partnership that would bring together all of the baton throwing athletes in the world. WFMBTA was then formed. These individuals bring their own personal experience and commitment to sport along with their responsibility to their respective organizations. This group has continuously remained committed to the principles of balance between the WBTF and the WFMBTA representations. Thank you, Paul. Um, just with little, the little involvement I have as a marketing communications team member, I can fully attest to the amount of time and energy and passion that this group of executive committee members has put in. So as uh, baton twirling, um, former athlete, coach, and uh, enthusiast. Thank you for your, your strong efforts. Um, so our la my last question of the event is to Sandy Weimers, and that would be how will the selection of IBTF leadership happen in the future? Well, PJ, as I mentioned earlier, we do expect that the election for the IBTF leadership will be held at the first full General Assembly where the member federations will conduct those elections according to the protocols defined in our policy manual. I am glad to see that Beverly Johnson was able to get back on the call. We did have a little snafu with that today, and I'm sorry she didn't get to close out her statement because it was an important one. Thank you, PJ, for filling us in on that. Uh, in closing, I want to thank Jen Marcus and PJ Birkin who are members of our IBTF marketing and communications team for being our great moderators this evening. And also thanks to our IBTF executive colleagues taking time out of their day to answer these questions on the webinar. Please don't forget to check for updates on the IBTF website at www.ibtf.batontwirling.org. We wish all of you the best and we want to encourage all of our athletes and our coaches worldwide to keep up your spirits. Soon we will all be back together again and look forward to a bright future for our sport. Back to you, Jen Marcus. Thank you so much, Sandy, and thank you to the executive members on the call tonight. We wanna thank everyone for taking the time out to attend this IBTF. Uh, European webinar this evening, and we hope you found our group of panelists interesting and informative. On the IBTF website, you are welcome to submit feedback and any more questions you might have. If you go to contact us, you'll be able to find how to submit those questions. Uh, the executive committee will do their best to answer what is possible either through the posted FAQ or uh, which is uh, frequently asked questions or uh, at a future IBTF webinar. And one last thing, please remember to follow us on social media. You can follow us on Facebook under International Baton Twirling Federation or on Instagram. 
And uh, if you have any, if you're interested at all in joining the communications and marketing committee, please feel free to submit those requests on the contact us section of the website as well. So from all of us here in North America and Europe, we would like to thank you once again and uh, stay safe. And we look forward to seeing you all again soon. So thank you and good night.